Welcome. On behalf of the members and friends, the people of First Presbyterian Church Shenandoah, Iowa, and First Presbyterian Church Essex, Iowa, I want to welcome you to this time together, wherever you are, how you are, and to be able to celebrate together not only God's goodness and God's grace and God's love, but all the ways in which God's Spirit unites us together, wherever we are, in praise, in thanksgiving, in prayer, and in purpose. I would like to especially thank this morning Carol Eno for her musical ability and for the way she has a, a, a gift of touching people's hearts with her music. I'd also like to thank Mark and Teresa Brockmeyer, who share their technical skills, their creativity, and who have 
the, uh, the ability to cut and splice to make everybody look as good as possible, which in some of our cases, mine in particular, is a real chore. We're so glad that you're here, so glad to be together, so glad to be in worship. Good morning. Come, let us walk together in the presence of God. Let us praise God who listens, who loves us, who protects us and forgives us and sends us forth to serve. Come, let us worship God together. Loving God, we give you thanks for the beauty of this June day. We are grateful for friends and family, for birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, and all your blessings. We give thanks for the church, where we can, wherever we are, share the ups and downs of life with one another and with you. As we are gathered physically apart, but united by your Holy Spirit, open us to your presence and help us discover what it is that you are calling us to be and do. Give us strength and courage to follow, we pray. Amen. Friends, the mystery of God brings the promise of life, but we sometimes doubt the Spirit's power to overcome death. The resurrection of Jesus Christ the Son reveals that nothing is impossible with God. Let us confess our sin and receive new life. Let us pray. Holy God, three in one, we confess that we do not know how to look for you. There are times when we do not sense your nearness. There are times when we ignore your attempts to get our attention. And if there are angels among us, we are unaware. Sometimes we do not trust that our hardships can be transformed by your spirit. You keep your promises and promise to always deliver us. Help us to seek and trust in your forgiveness. Give us joy in knowing new beginnings because your grace has made peace among us. Send us out with this good news so that others will also receive your blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray, amen. This is the assurance of God's grace. This is the good news. God graces everyone with mercy, restoration, and new life. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The scripture today is Psalm 1. The truly happy person doesn't follow wicked advice, doesn't stand on the road of sinners, and doesn't sit with the disrespectful. Instead of doing those things, these persons love the Lord's instruction, and they recite God's instruction day and night. They are like a tree replanted by streams of water, which bears fruit at just the right time, and whose leaves don't fade. Whatever they do succeeds. That's not true for the wicked. They are like dust that the wind blows away. And that's why the wicked will have no standing in the court of justice. Neither will sinners in the assembly of the righteous. The Lord is intimately acquainted with the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is destroyed. There is a simple but beautiful praise hymn that we do on occasion together. The title is, In My Life, Lord, Be Glorified. The words are simple, but, but really, really quite beautiful. And so um, I'd like to do that together today. The first verse is, In My Life, Lord, Be Glorified, today. The second verse is, In 
Our song, Lord, be glorified today. The third verse is, In your church, Lord, be glorified. And the last verse is, In your world, Lord, be glorified today. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. In our song, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In our song, Lord, be glorified today. Psalm 1 is a good lead-in for a memorable scene from a memorable musical. A young nanny hired by an Austrian widower to watch over his six children decides that She's going to share her passion for music with those children. She sits down with them on a scenic green Austrian hill, starts to tune her guitar, and then begins to teach them the ABCs of singing. Let's start at the very beginning a very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. The first three notes just happen to be Do, Re, Mi. And so begins the musical adventure between Fraulein Maria and the six Von Trapp children in The Sound of Music. The first three notes just happen to be Do, Re, Mi. The beginning is often a very good place to start. Today, we start a sermon series, a summer sermon series, a summer sermon series on selected psalms. The psalms are a very good place to start because in the psalms we find some of the most basic expression of human emotion. In the Psalms, we find honest communication, heartfelt communication between God's people and God, and God's people and each other. The Psalms were the hymn book, the song book, the, the liturgical book for ancient Israel. And so, it's no accident that you find a lot of the psalms embedded in the metaphors, the word pictures, the theology of many of the songs that we sing even today. 
The Psalms were used to gather the people. The Psalms were used to praise God. The Psalms were used to pray out loud in song. The Psalms were used to express heartbreak and lament when tragedy or, or personal ills and problems overtook people when the community itself needed to find a voice to express their heartbreak, the psalms were turned to. Poetry, prayer, song, and liturgy. The psalms fulfilled all of those functions. And then there is another good place to start. The very beginning. Psalm 1. Psalm 1 was an educational psalm in the wisdom tradition that was used to teach young people important and and valuable and what was, I'm sure, hoped to be lifelong lessons. The best place to begin, Psalm 1. Especially when one considers it's kind of the ABC or the Do Re Mi of Psalms. The first thing that you notice about Psalm 1 is that it starts with the word happy, it begins with a beatitude. Blessed. Happy is the person who. That word for happy in Hebrew begins with the very first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So, as we might sit down with a child and say, A is for apple, they would say, A is for ashray, happy, blessed. And then you're off and running. It just so happens that the final word in Psalm 1, the word for perish or destroy, starts with the final letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And so in between blessing and happiness and destruction, you have from A to Z in terms of life lessons that are important for the life of faith. The second thing that you notice about Psalm 1 is that there are two very distinct ways of life. There are two very different paths that a person's life can take or that they can choose when you when you come to a fork in the road. The advice of the psalmist isn't take it. The advice of the psalmist, the author of the psalm says, it matters a great deal when you come to a fork in the road which path you take. These paths are written in big, bold letters so as to not be missed. One way One way of life is the way of right living. Code name, righteous. Right living is when one soaks up all the love, grace, light, lessons that God has to offer and then shares it with the world around them. This way of right living, righteous, also comes with a word picture. The word picture is that of a tree planted by a stream of water, a sturdy, solid, enduring tree. This last week, I was able to uh, spend a little bit of time in Nebraska City at the LEAD Center 
for a coaching session with someone, and it was wonderful because we got to walk around the grounds of the, the, the Arbor uh, Lodge, and there was a path that went through some trees. It was a warm morning, and the, the shade felt good, and, and as we walked further on the path, there was a bridge that went over a small tree, stream, and there were trees planted on either side of that stream, and those trees were flourishing. That's the word picture, that's the image that the author of Psalm 1 wants to convey to anyone who's interested in knowing the best way to live. Be like that tree that soaks up all that God has to offer. It's an enduring, fruitful way of life. The second way is the way of wrong living. It's characterized by a kind of blatant disregard for God and, and a blatant disregard for the dignity of other people. It's irreverent. It's self-centered. It's me first. It's I'm going to get whatever I can out of life, no matter the cost, to myself or, or anyone else. It's the antithesis of happy. So many people are looking for happiness in so many different places and finding that what they thought would make them happy really turns out to not be what they thought it would. Sometimes it's a great burden to try to find happiness on your own, apart from a compass that's moral and good and right. And so you search and you search. The second way is, according to the author of the psalm, a way of futility. And it comes with a, a word picture and a code name, too. Code name, wicked. And the word picture, well, think of it this way. Imagine you're standing on a wooden plank sidewalk in a ghost town in the Old West. And in the background, you hear that, that theme song music from the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> the wind is blowing, and there's a dust devil that forms in the middle of the street that's dry, arid. All of a sudden, a dried piece of sagebrush blows across the street. Dry, arid, wind blown, unmoored, a way that is unsecure. The author of Psalm 1 intended those two ways, those two word pictures, those two code words to be as opposite as possible. So that the choice was more clear. They couldn't stand in greater contrast to get the lesson across. A life with God is rewarding, fruitful existence. A life without God is a barren wasteland. Or as Hebrew scripture professor Walter Brueggemann put it, Psalm 1 is transactional in an assertive, confident style. The formula is Good behavior yields good outcomes. Isn't that what you want to teach? Isn't that the life that you would want for a life that you're trying to form? Be good, and good things will happen. At some point, you want that message to be clear because that's a much better message than do whatever you want and see what happens. 
It's a much better message than no matter whatever, no matter what else you do, make sure that you get yours first. Let others do the same. At a basic level, we want to pass that along as being as true as the ABCs or the Do-Re-Mi's. But there's a slight problem with that the further along you get down the path. The temptation is, in a complicated world, to reduce the complex to the simple. Not just in an effort to understand it, but in an effort to avoid a paralysis of analysis. You don't want to have to reinvent the wheel every day. So make a complicated world as simple as you can. The problem with that is that we know that life just isn't that simple, including a life with God. It can't be reduced to a formula. It's more than just transactional. Code word righteous and code word wicked are black and white this or that. And past a certain point in life, we all know that no one is all good. Past a certain point in life, we know that no one is all bad. That we are a combination of both, even on our best days. And though we would choose the way of life, and right living, code name righteous, the truth is, we don't. We stand in need of God's grace and instruction and goodness and love always. We all sometimes do good, and we all sometimes do bad. And a life with God does not guarantee immunity from bad things happening to a person. I mean, we know that. J. Herbert Nelson is one of the most outstanding leaders in the church that I know. He is the elected stated clerk of the Presbyterian Church USA. J. Herbert Nelson is a man of great wisdom, a man of great compassion, a man who inspires others to be the best they can be. J. Herbert Nelson, a few years ago, was the convocation speaker at a Midwestern gathering of Presbyterian folk, primarily, in a small Iowa college town. J. Herbert Nelson came to this small Iowa college town as the convocation speaker and did a marvelous job entertaining, educating, inspiring over 700 people at that gathering over the course of a week. One night, J. Herbert Nelson had a little bit of free time on his hands. So he decided that he would borrow a car from a friend and drive around this small Iowa college town and see what there was to see. Not a lot, but he had some free time. J. Herbert Nelson was driving along in this small Iowa college town and suddenly noticed that there were lights flashing behind him. He was invited to pull over and invited to show his driver's license. And he had to explain that he was borrowing a car and seeing the sights of this friendly, small Iowa college town. I have to tell you that I have run on the streets of that small Iowa college town myself and never been suspected of a thing. I've driven myself on the streets of that small Iowa college town, and not once was I ever pulled over. 
Would it have made a difference that J. Herbert Nelson is a black man? A man of great integrity. A man of some standing in the Presbyterian Church USA, the highest elected office. A man who was just driving around looking at what a small, friendly Iowa college town had to offer and was pulled over. You can do the right thing. You can choose the right path and still not be immune from the bad in the world. And we all know that. I have never had to have a talk with my children to warn them and instruct them about what to do if you're pulled over, how you need to behave, what you need to say, how careful you have to be in order for that thing to not turn into something else. And trust me, friends, I have colleagues and friends and people that I know that have children that they have had to have that talk with. Because of who they are. Because of how they look. Because of the way things are. That are not right. And not a part of the way they should be. A more textured reading of Psalm 1 would be to say that a life lived closely with God is in fact blessed, is the best way to live, is sustainable and enduring and a good life, even when life and times and circumstances aren't. The righteous aren't perfect. They just know that life with God is better than life without God. Like that tree Planted by streams of water, there's a sustaining grace for the times when life is not the way we want it, not good. And we are given and equipped with what we need to be those people of God in the situations that we're called to be, in the situations where we find ourselves, in the situations where we are placed. Back to Fraulein Maria and the six Von Trapp singers. They began pretty simply, A, B, C, Do, Re, Mi. But if you've ever watched that song and that, that musical, you know that by the end of the song, that's not what they're doing. By the end of the song, they're mixing all kinds of notes in all kinds of ways. Do, re, mi, sol, fa, la, ti, do, in a kaleidoscope of different ways and sounds and voices. It starts simple and it moves on from there. Arranged more complexly. I'm no expert on music, but I've heard how even the most accomplished musicians return time and time again to the scales, to warm up, to keep whatever it is that they use when they're playing the instrument limber, to, to make sure that they continue to have the basics down. Stay in touch with Do, Re, Mi. No matter how long we've been singing, no matter how far along we are on the journey of faith, it's healthy and wise to stay in touch with the basics and remain, no matter who we are, teachable. To not get so far removed from the beginning that we forget the very best place to start, is always with God. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. 
The truly happy persons love the Lord's instructions. It's a good way to be. Thanks be to God. Ebedee, ebedee, ebedee. That's all, folks. Friends, please join with me in a word of prayer. Holy and gracious God, we come before you this day grateful for all the ways in which you help us to live a meaningful, good, deep life. Not only for ourselves, but sharing that with one another. And the difference that makes on the days when life is good and on the days when life is not. We lift up before you this day the things that are deepest in our hearts, the things that are in our minds, the things that are a part of our spiritual mix this day. The people, the places, the things. Knowing that there is unrest but also knowing that there are times when unrest is your spirit blowing. We pray for all those, God, who yearn and long for a way that's right and good for everyone. When the day will come that all know themselves to be valued and respected and loved for who they are no matter what. We pray this day, God, for families. Your blessing upon each family, each household, whether it is a place of peace or a place of conflict. We pray, God, for families and homes to be a place of safety and nurture and teaching and becoming and we pray for those families where that is not possible because of dysfunction, deep dysfunction, or division. We pray this day, God, for your church, that you will continue to equip us to be models, examples of a forgiven life, a forgiving life, and a life that's made possible when different people with different gifts come together to share those things. We pray, God, for those who are ill, for those who are suffering, for those who tend to those who are ill and those who are suffering. We lift up to you all the things that matter most to us, and the things that we forget that matter a great deal. And we lift it all up to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, go from this place as those who have heard good news and who have good news to share. Go from this place knowing that there is a way to be and that we are on that way and we have so much goodness and life and love to share with one another and with the world around us. Go from this place who know that right living matters to God. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen.